special for you. We've been waiting to get this gentleman here at True Fire for a real long while. He's a very, very busy cat, tours all over the world. One of my favorite, favorite players, Matt Schofield. And if you've not heard of him yet, I don't know where you've been, but I will tell you that he's won three times British Blues Awards for Guitarist of the Year. Amazing, you know, by itself. Um, he's in the British Blues Hall of Fame. Uh, guitar and Bass Magazine calls him one of the top 10 guitar British blues guitarists. Uh, Penguin Book of the Blues is one of only two living artists to gain maximum four-star rating. Um, and I, I love this quote from, uh, you know, the L.A. Daily News. The best blues guitarist from any country in decades. And uh, if you've heard him play, you'll know why all of that is true and why we're just so stoked to have him here at True Fire filming his very first True Fire course, um, which he's titled Blues Speak. Matt, welcome to True Fire, man. All right. Pleasure to be here, mate. Uh, begs the question, man. What is Blues Speak? Well, you know, as we... Uh worked through the ideas for the course a lot of um the themes came up that related to you know uh blues being very much a, a language and you know the the direction of the course seemed to be uh about trying to find ways to really say something with your playing so we kind of of course we touch on technical aspects and and the the notes we use, but really what it comes down to is this kind of idea of really feeling the music inside you, really feeling the rhythms and, the, you know, there's some very classic kind of blues grooves that I love to play over that we've included in the, in the course. And uh, just trying to feel that inside you and get it all the way down and out through your fingers on onto the instrument as opposed to it being some kind of you know, external thing that we're uh, grabbing hold of. We're trying to put ourselves and, and say something via, you know, a strong rhythmic foundation and uh, tone and, you know, uh, nuance and, you know, little details. So there's been a big focus on, uh, on all the stuff uh, that goes along with just the notes that makes you sound great, especially in the context of the blues. It is a language and, and learning it, um, getting your vocabulary together is a very important part of that so that you can express yourself via it. So, um, you know, blues, the, the blues speak, and blues speak seems to be a, kind of a, a good encompassing uh, type, of, type of idea for the course. So. Yeah, it's a great title for this course. And, um, you know, we've, we've only got one or two segments to go, I think just the intro segment. So we've, you know... Uh, sat here for two days listening to you do your thing and uh, you know the, your message is very liberating for we mere mortal guitar players you know <laughs> because you're saying hey yeah you know you can play a lot of notes you can play your fancy licks but that's not really what playing the blues is all about you can make a lot of music yeah. with one note and I, I think that's great news because so many of us focus on all of those technical aspects and theoretical aspects yeah. and and you in particular you're you're really an improviser aren't you, you T totally I, I mean obviously within my vocabulary and there's i like to set up themes but the whole thing the reason i picked up the guitar in the first place was really to make music with other human beings in the moment you know it's that thing of being in the moment so i can only really play in the moment i'm like i'm the most horrible session guitarist really i tried when i was first a professional musician in london i tried to um do a few kind of pop sessions and things like that and i could uh, i'm only any good at playing what i feel at that second and then getting it out um but to play on demand or you know deliver some sort of perfect uh, arpeggio part or something that's not my area so i kind of for better or for worse um embraced this idea of <coughs> excuse me this idea of playing in the moment and uh and 
and found, you know, what I do through that, really, you know, and that's hopefully we can pass that on a little bit it, because it is it's a journey and it's it is finding a way to express yourself via the instrument, you know, um, and nothing feels better than that to me. Mm -hmm. That's really what um, what I love about the whole thing. I don't know what I do if I didn't have that. I honestly I don't know where I who I would be or what I would do if I didn't have the chance and uh, have developed the ability to just express myself through the instrument. That's fantastic. And it's definitely your voice. I mean, it's very much a part of you. Yeah. We've watched you play now for two days up close in HD, 4K, all these different camera angles. Um, I loved that, uh, you know, we'd play, you know, we'd say, could you play that? lick again you know what lick yeah <laughs> no, I, you know yeah, that was can be very tricky. much in the moment we yeah. would have to play the lick back for you yeah. for you to remember what you did it's not pieced together like <laughs> that and that's that is part of the course really and again talking about it like a, a language and, and speaking and saying something with the instrument you know if you if you try and overthink what you're saying in a conversation or you trying to think about what you're going to be saying in a minute's time it it ruins what you're saying at the time mm -hmm. you know and and uh also you know you have to listen to the other instrumentation the other people and really try and get that communication that conversation going on so yeah um that's that at this point i've uh, that's the only way i know how to do it <laughs> so. yeah no it's uh it's amazing to your you know definitely what they call a one take wonder you know <laughs> And uh, and if you do a second take, it's going to come out completely different, yeah. you know, what in that moment's time. Um, do us a favor. There was one demonstration from the course where you showed how you took a basic, like a Bo Diddley rhythm. Yeah. You know that piece? Yeah. Uh, demonstrate that concept of, you know, it all stems from the rhythm yeah. and few notes, one note. You know? Yeah, because to me, you can... Music really is rhythm first and, and foremost to me, so um, it's all built off that. It, it's hard for me to imagine having music without um, without rhythm. You know, you can play notes without putting any context around them, but the context is rhythm. So, and blues certainly comes from uh, rhythm first and foremost. Uh, it came from African drumming originally. You know, so you've got. You know, that kind of New Orleans um, kind of uh, Bo Diddley type beat. And you've already got the beginning of a song there without any notes. So when I realized that, I thought, well, then you don't, you know, you can build, everything should be, should be built on that. And um, so you start adding pitch if you want, like low. And uh, then you can take that to just, you know, one chord um, and we're starting to make music with very I'm playing that's a two note chord very little information there or even just the, the, the principle being to me that uh, if it stands up on that level uh, and m with musically if you can break it down to its simplest elements and have them be strong and uh feel good, sound good, then you can build on top of that. Every every aspect that you add, more complex harmony, more complex melody, um, is going to uh, be built on a good foundation. It's, it's like you can't do something uh, complex well unless you can do something simple really well. And that, so that's, that's kind of the, the angle we're coming from here, you know? So um, and, and so it doesn't take... For those of us that, you know, don't have the blazing licks or don't have the fancy moves, uh, can we play? I remember you talking about the players that inspired you when you yeah. were younger. They weren't doing blazing stuff, but no. they were doing soulful stuff that really... Re yeah, right? and it's it's sophisticated in its own way. And and um, so, as I, as I talked about in the course, simple isn't necessarily easy, but... Uh, it's about putting it together in such a way that you don't, you know, Albert King, one of my early and still favorite 
influences. I listen to him all the time still. I have spent 30 years listening to him. He didn't have a massive vocabulary, you know? What he had was absolute command of the vocabulary that he did have. Um, he also invented um, much of the vocabulary that the rest of us still use. So, uh, but it was, you know, it, on paper, it's simple. But to get something down to the essence that's that, um, that f focused, you know, um, I think I said before, it's like being able to do a, a incredible painting in just a few brush strokes and have a picture that everyone can recognize with just a few strokes. Like a Picasso, for instance. Yeah, example. exactly. Yeah. You know, um, so that's really what, it, what it's about. So, but we can take that and keep that in mind for ourselves. And I still am at a point now, I mean, I'm, I'm interested in playing in some ways as little as I can, can while still keeping it excited. You know, it's sort of like almost like refining. That's where I find myself now. And on a good night, I say I've done, I've had a good gig because I didn't play too much. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's, it's easy to get yeah. carried away. And then I hear it back and I'm like, oh man, shut up. You know, <laughs> you just- Too many notes. Yeah. Right? So for me, a successful uh -huh. gig when I'm really happy with it is where I just nailed some big notes, you that's know, great. To, that's, um, but we can all sort of, you can use that. So whatever level that you find yourself at, it, it, even with uh, uh, an, a, a new or emerging vocabulary, if you've not been playing long, um, with, with focusing on tone, timing, phrasing with what you, what you do know, um, and apply how you apply the knowledge you have. That's what um, is going to make you sound great straight away. Mm -hmm. You know, you can you can go straight to it with with not that much information, but with the with the tools to apply. Hey, it. let's try this. Mm -hmm. uh, let's roll that slow blues track. Yeah, and do that. Sure. As few notes as possible. Well, that's yeah, that's a cool exercise to to limit yourself. So I'm just going to play like. Uh, the root, the third, and the fourth. The root, root three, four, five okay. is what I'm allowed to use. How about okay, that? Okay, deal. <laughs> Still just up an octave. Just the three notes all the way through. Well, I'd say that was the picture worth a thousand words. <laughs> yeah, hopefully. <laughs> right. And it's deliberately limiting myself. But, you know, that's, that's a good exercise. It's, it's trickier to do and make it sound convincing mm -hmm. and still say something with just a, that little bit of information. Yeah, and, you know, 
that's what I love about the central message in your course is, and, and what I mean by liberating, you know, so many of us think we have to have, you know, amazing chops and, you know, have all of these great techniques. And it's, you know, we love, all love to throw that uh, in. As absolutely, you, you absolutely. Know. But you can make a lot of music with just those few notes. Yeah. And it and is liberating is the right word because yeah. when you push that stuff aside, you, uh, you free yourself up to, to, to say something, to speak with the, with the instrument. And gradually what I, I found is if I step back and, and take a second like that to, to not concern myself with um, being overly uh, consumed by um, thinking about theory or scales or something like that, then all the knowledge you have amassed seeps back in in a natural way and you go beyond those three notes in a in a musical way it, you know you're you're mm -hmm. like uh putting putting it to the back of your brain and then use using it in a more innate way so mm -hmm. so many um of us and i include myself in the us you know we we want to throw in those altered scales the diminished scales we want to do all that cool stuff um but you're telling us really you know, start with the foundation yeah. and build from there. Yeah, never lose the foundation there. Right. So, so when you do drop your cool diminished line, it's still um, functioning on the 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 foundation that we've established of you know your tones happening, your timings in the pocket, your phrasings uh, interesting and exciting. You know, all those things. Then you're ready to drop the diminished line. <laughs> Very cool. Very cool. The, this course is really phenomenal. I can't wait. I hope Tommy will fast track this one, if only so I can get my hands on it. You know. <laughs> um, so we have quite a few people online. Uh, they probably should be working, but <laughs> you know they've got their little uh, video YouTube thing going or the True Fire thing going. Um, let's go and pick a track. Sure. And show us now, let's go to the other end of the meter and show us now, once we have a foundation, how we throw in some of those cool, diminished... Sure, I'll let's give it a go. There's a, there's a kind of fast swing and shuffle called Tipping that we did. Uh, all, all these tracks are, uh, are uh, real human being backing tracks that I awesome. got with my friend Raul Valdez on drums and uh, Very Phil, cool. Phil McCarthy on bass uh, and me on bass. Uh, you know, yeah, go, tip as long, go as long as you want. And in the meantime, folks, if, you know, any questions you have for Matt, start, you know, listening to him in a live chat there and we will try to get Matt to answer all of them before we're done here. And roll it. All right, let's see what happens.
now. <laughs> There's a few notes there, a few more than three or four, right? Yeah. But that's still the still, same principle, though, really. Exactly. <laughs> that's building on that foundation. That was killer, man. Really yeah. killer. And judging from the feedback we're seeing in the live chat, um, you know, you get scored an A plus on that one. Okay? Oh, cool. You know what the hardest thing is? Playing yeah. sitting down for me. I have to say, know. I'm you like, know, normally I'm like leaning on I the guitar. Know. It's so. funny <laughs> that you said that because the uh, the what I wanted to share with everyone is if you have not seen Matt play live yet, you absolutely must do that. You're you know you're just killer on stage. You know you really uh, uh, it's a very exciting thing to watch. Uh, you know, like the visual experience enhances yeah. the, you know, what you're listening to. It's fantastic. Um, it's a quick little story uh, that I want you to tell. You know, I, I want to tell, I, I, I want everyone to rush out and buy all your records. Okay. That would be nice. Support the cause, right? But share what happens at merch sometime. From, <laughs> you tell me. You oh, know, man, these days. Yeah. But th yeah, I mean, you know, I have. CDs and vinyls and things laid out, and I always try and if if I can get out there after the set and say hi to people and and uh, uh, sign things and get pictures and whatever we uh, we uh, we'd like to do. But uh, quite often these days, people are checking out the albums and then you know going, oh, I don't have that one, and adding you in Spotify these days, yeah. you know, or something do like that. Do not do that. Yeah, That's just it's, wrong on every level. It's, it's a know. funny time in the yeah. music industry, yeah. and uh, you know what? I feel very grateful to be here at True Fire um, as, a, as another avenue to get the music out, and especially, you know, um, to people who are aspiring musicians or longtime musicians looking for some new ideas. And, you know, that is so important and uh, and so humbling that uh, that I uh, have the opportunity to share that because that's that's another level of, of reaching um, fans and audience and people that really care about the music, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's important in this you know, current climate of the music industry, you know. Absolutely. And, you know, you're you're keeping the form alive and you're kind of paying it forward. Just yeah, like hopefully. you were inspired by, you know, BB and name some of the other guys. Remember that what's that story you were listening to yeah. your dad's records? You're twelve years old or something. Yeah, so? I'd been grow I'd grown up, you know, checking out my dad's vinyl blues records. And then actually one summer in California where he lives, uh he'd Managed to capture this thing on VHS cassette as it was then, you know, uh, video, and it was it was BB um, uh, King and Albert Collins uh, guesting with Stevie Ray Vaughan and his band. They all got up and played Texas Flood, and uh, that was the moment for me. That was the game changer of like, I have to do this. And uh, what really struck me was they were all amazing. Or, or each three guitar players were were all amazing and all completely different. Um, and you know, you BB's got this sound, Stevie's got the sound, Albert Collins, you couldn't find three guys that sound more different. Of course, BB and Albert haven't been core influences of Stevie's, but he still wrapped that up into his own thing. In fact, BB was an influence on everybody. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and uh, he, you know, he, he wrote the first few chapters in the book, but um, for anyone that bends strings or, or plays, <coughs> You know, vibrato or Ben's, you know, all from BB. The BB box, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, you know, nobody made the guitar sing until BB King. Mm. It had a different, you know, even T Bone and those guys were, you know, it was a different thing. And then BB came along and went, it, so we have him to thank for that. But uh, it was the, what struck me was they all sounded so different um, and yet so great. And I thought, wow, you, how. Um, how can you argue with that, really? There's, it's not like you can't say better or this guy's got the... It was just everybody was great and just individuals. And so I was immediately drawn to the idea of just um, saying something of your own through the vocabulary and the format of the blues. Mm. And then it becomes like the blues is like, a, you know, that's your frame to work within. and But you can paint whatever you want inside the frame so mm -hmm. that maybe the 12 bar form uh is is your canvas you know but mm -hmm. uh it's um that's the beauty of it to yeah me. that's a great way of putting it man um we've got a few questions 
Yeah. Any one of these could be an entire course. And <laughs> Matt has already <laughs> agreed to come back. I'd okay. love to. Um, and now we have many hundred of witnesses to that. We broadcast <laughs> that, so you are coming back. Cool. Um, so just kind of briefly address some of these questions sure. so we can try to get them all answered. Um, first one is how, do, how important and how would you approach plane over changes? And it's something you talk about in the course. It too. is something, and it's very, it's very important. I mean, even in the context of a 12-bar blues with three chords, I am uh, hyper aware of the of the changes, you know, and I, I I treat each one as its own thing. So um, that's what makes your playing, first of all, fit with the music, and it it, it leads the listener's ear. Uh, it brings out the melody um, of of your playing, and so yeah, I, I mean, like after getting my tone together and and playing, you know, having a good pocket and groove and feeling those rhythms. Um, that's the next thing for me. Again, more than I don't really think about licks or something. I'm trying to bring out those chord tones, you know, so that's... Go, that's go a, through, just go through a simple one, four, five. Yeah. No backing track. Yeah. And, and just demonstrate how you might outline those chords. So... Uh, well, again, if we go back to the slow blues, I can play once around a progression, and hopefully, uh, we'll we'll you'll be able to hear the changes coming anyway. Cool. Something like. So uh, is uh, the basic approach targeting chord tones? Targeting chord tones, trying to lead. My, my kind of thing that I guess people pick up on a lot is I just bring in the third, the major third mm. of each change. So, mm. you know, and we're playing an A there, and um, we're, I'm leading up uh, then to the, uh, when in the four chord, the F sharp. And it's sort of like bringing out that sound out of the well we're playing dominant seventh triads most of the time on a on a blues progression and uh five chord so it's it's like aiming for that um uh leading the ear into the change perhaps just before you play it or mm -hmm. when you're in there so so not so much the root or tonic the third yeah and you're saying you might hit it just before the change so yeah, when the change might, happens like, it just hitting that and that makes it a bit more exciting and then the change hits and um and then usually i wind my way to resolve perhaps land on the root note it's more of punctuation you know nice. so when it it's that uh, this all there's many many different ways to look at that mm -hmm. and we touch on a few different ways sure. in the course but um that definitely is a course unto itself really and uh, you you know you i can't uh stress enough how much learning how to build and spell chords out mm -hmm. of a dominant seventh triad and then extensions you can add you know chords and lead playing if you want to call it that are not uh separate things you know and and the more you can see them as 
uh, all both happening at the same time, whether you're playing one note at a time, it's still, you're playing one small part of the chord. And uh, if you can see it like that, it's gonna like connect your playing to the music, to the harmony, you know? Mm. That's a great, great lesson right there. Uh, many hundreds of us will be trying that tonight. Okay. <laughs> All right, I hope so. Um, we, another question. I'm going to be throwing a ton out at you because we're getting a ton in. All right, no problem. Um, good questions. Really good questions. Uh, major, minor, you know, scales, yeah. pentatonic scales. Well, briefly, what's your take on that? Sticking to one, mixing them together, when to use one, not the other? Yeah, it's... Um, and my playing is basically 90% of the time I'm just playing major and minor pentatonic at the same time. Mm -hmm. So there's, again, there's a lot of different ways you could view it. Some people would say it's like a minor pentatonic with the sixth degree added. Uh, if you add the sixth and the ninth to the minor pentatonic, then you've pretty much got yourself the major pentatonic contained within it. Um, but when it's important to learn the major pentatonic on its own merit, rather than, as I first learned it, and many other people do, just thinking of it as a minor pentatonic down a minor third is mm -hmm. not, uh, that's not doing it justice. You need to see it as its own thing. Uh, uh, so, uh, and, you know, so that you can, uh, uh, play out. That's just both of them at the same time, which, mm -hmm. again, you could view as kind of mixolydian-y as well. Mm -hmm. or You know, so there's many different ways. But to me, it's basically uh, choosing major or minor pentatonic for whatever chord you're on. In the case of, um, there's another big secret, this really, that, but the one chord, major or minor pentatonic. The four chord, uh, Made major pentatonic from the key of the four chord. So in this case, it, it's a D in the key of A. The, the D major pentatonic becomes your friend over that chord. That's a real, um, once you get that down, um, you're going to add a lot of uh, nice melody to your playing. But um, so I go for the major sound on the four chord, and then the five chord is either major or minor in the key of. E in this case. The uh, minor pentatonic or the... But in the key of the five the, chord. It, yeah, so each one I'm playing it when I'm... It's like kind of viewing it like I can still play A minor blues over any of the changes in A. Mm -hmm. And then I can play the major or minor pentatonic from the key of the change as well. Mm -hmm. So the five chord is an E, I'll play E minor pentatonic, E major pentatonic, or A minor blue scale still. Okay, so, so um, l lots of great information there because you're right, a lot of us learn the minor pentatonic yeah. box and then, oh, it's major pentatonics, we move that box down, yeah. that minor third, yeah. right? But the first thing you advise us to do is learn it in the same position as your minor pentatonic. Yeah, so you yeah. have them both visually, yeah. but also uh, audio-wise, mm -hmm. in your so you can reach for those sounds in your mind as mm -hmm. well. That's a big sort of part of it. So you're not slave to a pattern of knowing that yeah. pentatonic box yeah, yeah, there yeah. and then just taking it down, you know. Right. That, that's, that's fine. But what you really want to be is uh, going, okay, I'm looking for a more major sound in my mind. Back to minor. Because uh -huh. I know the effect that... That's that minor sound. Mm -hmm. And then I want to go... A little more sweeter, you know? Yeah. So, so it's an audio experience as yeah, well as a, as a visual that's one. That's a great tip. And then the other awesome tip i thought was you know many of us take that minor pentatonic and then we play it over all of the changes yeah and what you're saying a little secret tip you could play minor or major over the one chord yeah you play major 
in the key of the four chords. Yeah, the so major the key pentatonic. Of a, you play yeah. D major pentatonic. That gives you a cool sound. Yeah. And then you get to the five chord in the key of the five chord. In this case, the E minor or major. That's right. Back to the four. Yeah. Major. And as I say, there's many different ways to look at this, right, whatever I mean, works for you. And you'll see like the E minor pentatonic, if you're playing it as the five chord in A, is only one note different than the A minor uh -huh. pentatonic. So you're only, you're changing uh, what is the uh, minor third in A. If you change that to uh, the, the ninth, you're just changing one note and you get E minor pentatonic, but you're playing it from E to E. Right. And that's the other important part. It's almost a slightly modal way of playing mm -hmm. blues scales in that I'm doing these um, not exactly from root to root, but I am playing them with that in mind, if you see what I mean. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm truly properly playing them in that, right. in that key. So uh, uh, rather mm -hmm. than, yeah, just transporting shapes or yeah, something like that's that. That's just great, man. I mean, the you know, the proverbial stuck in a rut thing. Yeah. You know, you get, so many of us get stuck in that minor pentatonic box yeah. rut, you know, and can't seem to get anything fresh out of it. Yeah. I think you just unlocked several doors for us, so worth the price of admission right there, man. <laughs> Um, All right. Let's play something. Call yeah. a track. Play something for us. Uh, we've got that kind of New Orleans -y groove. I love New Orleans music and New Orleans in general. So uh, we put together a kind of second line groove that I like to play over. So let's uh, let's go for that one.
can't see the live chat but i can tell you, you have a, a a lot of fans out there and uh you know i i uh, will show you after all the people that know and love you and some of the well, nice things they're saying about you but um you are very very well liked um that's not nice just as know. a player but as a human being which we've learned ourselves over these past couple of days well and thank you and it's uh, been lovely i've told you but but it's been so lovely being here and everybody's so good at what they do yeah. and so nice about oh, doing thanks, it and man. that really is the truth and i i wish it was a more common experience uh -huh. in the music industry but this one is oh, entirely man. positive so that's well, the truth you know as well. thanks so. to folks like you we love what we do you know and you're you're so easy to work with what do you want to eat whatever you, know. <laughs> you want coffee yeah sure whatever you're just you're you're well it's been awesome a pleasure it's been with, a pleasure Brad. um a couple more questions yeah um this one i think is appropriate for what you just did talk about which you talk about in the course um shifting your phrasing and timing over and across the beat yeah right i mean it really comes from having a strong sense of it inside you it's not something you can reach for uh, and it's not something you can rely on uh, the drummer for. You have to have your centered sense of time and then be able to feel those subdivisions and, and you know, have an awareness of what a triplet feel is. You know, I mentioned in the course, but I, uh, I always loved right from the beginning listening to Hendrix, Mitch Mitchell's drumming, and he would play all those triplet feels uh, into... The change, you know, ba da ba da ba ba da ba ba da ba, you know, um, around the kit, and that was an influence. That phrasing of how he'd play that to where, you know, might go myself, you know, and that's me it, sort of trying to bring out that like Mitch Mitchell triplet feel. So, it, listen to great drummers, you know, listen to how the beats are divided, the subdivisions, and all that stuff. Uh, um, but it really comes down to having uh, the, the stronger and more centered your sense of time is yourself, then um, the more you can play with it because you, you're aware of where it is and you can, you know, flirt with time and juggle with time. I think of it as keeping the balls in the air, but you always, you know, you got that rhythm happening internally. And then, and again, it's liberating when you're confident and and uh, solid in that yourself, you can you can enjoy playing with it. So I, I remember a segment in the course where you were talking about you know when you play kind of outside or put a whole tone scale. Mm. It's a little like that you're saying where it's okay to go outside the yeah. beat, outside the harmony, but come back. You yeah, know, stay, always stay centered. I, right? And sometimes it's about playing for the end point of a line if you see so you you kind of you have to just i'm not afraid to take a run up at it and leap as long as you've got a good landing point in mind that might be the root note or uh, and on the downbeat mm -hmm. and you can you can get away with a fair bit as long as you land in the right spot uh -huh. you know so it's and, that, and that's the tricky part <laughs> it is but that's you know? why you've got to be centered rhythmically that, while you're playing yeah in fact i think he said you know um like if you think that if you're trying to think and make it happen externally i mm -hmm. think it was where you're going in the course um you've got too much going on instead of just feeling you it letting, feel your way through. letting the downbeat come naturally yeah. and letting the line resolve there naturally if you, right? if you really feel it it's like listen to james brown it's all one <laughs> it's all beat one it's just uh -huh. huh uh-huh huh and you're so aware of where that one is, you know, huh, that to me then, you can't miss it. And so you can throw a bunch of stuff up in the air uh, and you, you're feeling that 
huh, one downbeat so much that you can aim for it and land on it. That's so great. that's the best way I can explain it. But it's all about having it together inside, not looking for answers outside. You know? The whole theme of this course? Yeah. Blues speak, right? Yeah, exactly. There we go. Um, we have another question about um, uh, one of the guys out there is having a little bit of trouble uh, or finding it a little bit challenging. Vibrato. Mm. on a sustained bend. Right. That's tough. Yeah. No doubt about it. It's just something you've got to just kind of, you know, uh, it's hand strength. And, I mean, it's reliant. There's a technical aspect for me. I need my big frets to do stuff that I <laughs> can do, you know, that I'm used to it. And so with the guitar with very small, low frets, is very hard for me to play that kind of stuff. So... Uh, that's a valid excuse uh, at this point. I'm lost without my little frets. But yeah, in order to be able to... Uh, I mean, it's just... It's just a doing it thing, I think. It's That's, practice. Yeah, you're saying, right? just practice. It's hard. It's going to hurt your fingers. I've been playing for two days now. I've got my calluses have already come off, so mm -hmm. I'm sore than when I started. Mm -hmm. um, but the funny thing is, if I got with my band right now and had to do a gig, I wouldn't feel it one bit. You know, it's like you, so you have to put that aside uh your desire to make the guitar sound as good as possible mm. has to go beyond physically uh the possible discomfort <laughs> I uh -huh. think that, otherwise and we've all done that at some point because we all sat there and tried to play that d chord for the first time and went oh man that hurts do you know what i mean like I that do. it was <laughs> yeah. it was hard <laughs> yeah. so we've all done it so you know doing big bends with vibrato at the top is really just a continuation of that in and, and eventually you'll it'll be like no big deal great answer um, here is an interesting question. You can take a moment to think about this mm. one, too. Um, something you know now that you wish you knew when you were just starting out. Oh, okay. No, I know right away. Go ahead. The major scale, uh -huh. which <laughs> is uh, what all... It's all built on, of course. Even blues where we rarely play a major scale straight very rarely encounter a major seventh. Um, if you were a piano player, it would be unthinkable to even begin playing the piano without knowing the major scale, at least from C to C, sat in front of you. But because, certainly in my case, and I know many other people picked up the guitar wanting to play blues and rock and roll, and we've learned chords as closed shapes, and then maybe somebody shows you the minor pentatonic and you're like, you get going with something of that. Um, you can master, you can just totally sidestep ever knowing about the major scale and knowing it all over the neck and, uh, um, you know, um, but it's all built off that. And so learning the major scale, learning the degrees of the scale, one, two, three, four, five, you know, I was calling things a four chord when I was a kid playing in bands, when, but I didn't know why that was the four chord. I didn't know it was built off the fourth degree of the major scale. So, yeah, uh, it was like I had a huge chunk missing that, and of course, I want to play blues, I, you know, I don't worry about that. But taking the time to learn that, taking the time to understand how the chords are built out of the major scale, the degrees of the major scale, um, I'm certainly no expert on modes to this day, you know. Um, and, and a lot of the scales I use, I, I don't really even know what they're called, you know. Like, I know the sounds of them. But the major scale, yeah, I just, I just it was uh, hugely overlooked. And um, it, having that understanding of, of, of uh, how it's all built. So uh, it's not, not so much that you would use the major scale as kind of a melodic device as much as it is giving you a really good understanding of how Western music anyway Exa is, exactly, is yeah. crafted. You're always going to be in the dark a bit about right. how it works until you take the time to sit there and, uh, and be able to get around the guitar with it, you know? Mm -hmm. Awesome. Um, playing with a light touch, 
yeah. which you do many times. You'll be very aggressive, and then you'll play something very light. Yeah. How do you decide, you know, when do you deploy that technique? You know, that's the tone stuff for me. That mm. all comes under the umbrella of tone. So it's not so much a conscious thing as I'm always, it's a constant feedback loop of listening to what's coming out of my amp and then trying to make it sound a certain way to create the feeling that I'm after, really. So, um, you know, it might be the guitar wide open, but playing really soft so that it's very sensitive. And, you know, if you make one false move, you hear everything. But um, that, if, you know, if I hit it harder, that's... The only thing I'm changing there is my dynamic range. Um, so it's a, it's a tonal thing, you know. And with a good setup, a nice amplifier, and the right signal path, which is, I try and keep as simple as possible, you're in control of that. So that's, that's, uh, without changing any any volume or anything like that so yeah it's it's a it's a i'm searching in the sounds mm -hmm. of the guitar for so the for a, the effect a, that i want a really critical element of blues speak right uh, it, that, the that dynamics is tone you keep talking about rhythm and tone and really the emphasis of this course and why we think it's so liberating is you don't really get into a lot of technical stuff. It's all very, you know, um, the art, you know, yeah. the feeling, the, you know, what what you should do with what you already know. Exactly, how to apply exactly. the knowledge that you already have. Yeah, and you're saying just like we talk, you know, sometimes fast and loud. Yeah, you and get excited. Soft, and you, right. you, yeah. So I love that message, man. Yeah, it's um, whatever level you're coming in at, I think... Uh, having these concepts, th these are the real answers to how I play, really. You know, I, I have the same notes as everybody else. So, mm -hmm. and all of us only have 12 of them, you know, or 11, really, in an octave. So, th these ideas, really, and uh, the application of the knowledge that you have, these are the real answers of how to sound good to me. You know, mm -hmm. it's the th these are the real learning more stuff is not always the answer, you know, mm -hmm. of course. You, I'm not suggesting it's not good to learn more stuff for one second, but that's not always the answer you're looking for, you know? Right. Play another tune, pick uh, one out. Yeah, what we got there, uh, Tommy? What, uh, why don't we do uh, uh, Shuffleupagus, yes, for those. What's the name of that one? <laughs> Shuffleupagus. Love it. By yeah. the way, I was these a are, Sesame Street fan. These you know? are all tracks from the course, yeah. which will come with the course, but you, you demonstrate and perform over all of these tracks as I well. I do, right? and it's all tabbed out as yeah. well. So. Yeah, everything's going to be tabbed. Right, Tommy? And if you all send, if you'd like us to fast track this course, send. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> no, no, no. No, I'm just saying. Saying send Rachel at truefire.com. She runs our support desk. Uh, a little note uh, asking her to fast track the course. <laughs> uh, we'll see what we'll we'll see how anxious folks are to get their hands on this thing. This is for me, really. Uh, do me a favor and let you know ask her to fast track it. Are you ready? Yeah, hit me.
you sweet, go. Sweet, man. That was <laughs> killer. Um, I, I can't believe the time got away from us like wow. this. We could go on forever, you know? Um, we could. And I apologize to all the folks out there whose questions we didn't get to answer. Um, we tried to pick the ones um, uh, that, you know, seem to be the most popular ones. Most of your answers are going to be in this course. So Matt, I hope so. And if Matt, they don't, we'll do another one. Well, <laughs> well, we're going to do another one. Remember, I've got witnesses you've committed. Um, I also want to thank, I didn't even know this was possible. You didn't know this, but you were busking here because... A couple of these guys gave tips. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Well, I didn't even know you could do that. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right. Um, and we're going to take those tips and we're going to donate them to a kids' charity Absolutely. that Let's embraces that. music as you know for disadvantaged kids. Yes. Um, thank you for that. Thank you, everyone, for showing up as well. Um, we'll keep you posted on the course, but we do want to cover a couple of quick things. You got a new album coming out soon. Yeah, it's going to be out hopefully uh, early next year. We're shooting for been a few things to tie up with it, um, and it's been a minute. Uh, it's uh, with my original organ trio band from my original UK band, Johnny Henderson on the organ, Evan Jenkins on drums, and um, it's our fifteenth anniversary. So mm -hmm. we uh, we haven't actually been together in the studio for over a decade. So we uh, thought it was about time we. Uh, got the band back together for a minute there. So we're going to be doing that and some touring in Europe next year with that. We're going to Japan with that band in just about 10 days. going to be nice. in Tokyo. And your tour schedule's on your website. It is, yeah, so yeah. Tell everyone what your website is. Uh, MattScofield.com. Okay, and, uh, spell it. Schofield with an S-C-H-O-F-I-E-L-D, Matt with two Ts. Excellent. Um, and, you know, the usual uh, Facebooking and Instagram malarkey. Good. All of that stuff. Good. You do. You know. You absolutely want to catch Matt live, and do us a favor. Please buy the album. Don't Spotify the album. And if you're <laughs> going to Spotify, don't do it in front of him at merch <laughs> table for God's sake. Um, please. Um, I might get six cents. From tell Spotify. us quickly about the gear as well. Yeah, Love the guitar just it, sounds phenomenal. Yeah. Looks phenomenal. This is um. This is made by my dear friend of. Well, at least 25 years now, we've been being idiots about guitars together. Simon Law uh, in the UK. Um, I have a, a, my number one guitar for many years. My only guitar for many years was a, my original 1961 Strat, and uh, it's a wonderful guitar. It's our benchmark. But um, I it was getting lost by airlines for 36 hours, and I couldn't cope. Oh. And so Simon... Uh, but he started trying to crack the code about what made it so cool, and he made me a couple. And then he he made this one as a gift, actually, which was the most wonderful thing. He didn't tell me he was making it, and he he modeled it and aged it right after the original '61, sort of a to, as a tribute to it. And this has been my number one from that day. I I mean, I have lots of lovely guitars, um, uh, you know, probably about a dozen, but this gets played 95% of the time. So it's, it's, it's it sounds, it yeah. looks great. It sounds great. And what do you, you know, when you're playing live, what do you uh, amplify with? Yeah, I've been with two rock amplifiers for about probably 12 years since I bought my first one and have become uh, really great friends with Max Skinner and Eli uh, uh, Lester and Bill Cranard over there, some of my favorite people in the world. That's two rock. Two rock amplifiers over in California. And this is their late, we did a signature amp a few years ago, but I actually, this is their latest uh, flagship model, the classic reverb. And uh, I've been using this for about a year and a half now on tour. And uh, um, man, it's just my favorite amp of, of uh, all time. Mm -hmm. And every single one of their new models uh, I've used in the last three months uh, in various locations around the world on mm -hmm. tour. I can happily do a gig through any of them now. It's really next level stuff. I can't say enough good things. String driver cabinet from Japan. Mm -hmm. um, my favorite cabinets in the world are made by the fellas at String Driver in Japan. And uh, I'm traveling super light for this because I don't need a, a great deal of stuff on the floor uh so this is a prototype uh mad professor pedal that i'm working on with the guys um that i'm playing through uh it's kind of a tweaked uh, royal blue overdrive on one side and a, and a cymbal pedal on the other put together so i can switch back and forth between them and you know i can do 90 percent of that um 90 percent of what i need with just that pedal sometimes uh um it hasn't been appropriate for the tracks in this time but i have my vemurum shanks 
fuzz when I want to go a little bit crazy. Always a mad professor delay as well. Mm -hmm. um, that's set just a little longer than a slapback. First time trying this ox thing. What do you think of the ox? Uh, so far, so good. I mean, I didn't even mess around with it that much. Yeah. Uh, I pl plugged in and, you know, we moved the mic around in virtual reality for a second. Uh -huh. And I was like, all right, that seems to Not work. Bad, so yeah. I'd, I'd love to have the chance to, you know, really get... Uh, delve into it but um, you know I'm not really a gear fiddler so mm -hmm. the, the simpler something is uh, the, the better for me I want to get down to playing music rather than messing with stuff and that seemed to be able to do that so yeah, uh, we've, we've thumbs up of, so far a lot of success with that one more time the guitar maker SVL guitar Simon Law and I must mention also my strings Kurt Mangan strings okay. uh, from Colorado Kurt is uh, another fantastic human being uh, and makes just, um, I've never broken one of these strings on a gig ever. So uh, um, it's, and they sound great and they last great and uh, I love them. And uh, yeah, you know, it's. Um, and you had this interesting, or is it a string stretcher? Tool? Oh yeah, I thought I'd give it a try because, you know, I change them. Let me, let me get that. So you <laughs> yeah, yeah. String stretcher, yeah. I've just been trying this out. It's like twelve bucks on Amazon or something, <laughs> you know. But because um, I change them every gig, you know, and and often I don't have much time because I've been, I'll have been traveling, driving, and then it, so they own, they're they're fresh on when I walk on stage, and you know. So I used to sit there and do this mm -hmm. as much as I can, but they'd still slip. But this thing, you ho hook it under there. And you, you know, you just go back and forth a few times. Not too much, otherwise you can actually kind of deaden them. You know, mm -hmm. I discovered. Um, and I then I seem to b just stay in tune for the rest of the night. So uh, yeah, the stretcher with an A. There we go. Shout out for the stretcher guys. We we love our gadgets. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's cool. Twelve bucks or something like that. I thought it was worth a try, and you know. <laughs> So um, let's let's roll that slow blues track again. Maybe you can play us out. Oh yeah! Thank you so much, man. For you know, you've had a very busy day. Photo shoots, finishing up the course. We still have some stuff to do. For taking the time. My pleasure, and thank you for to having me. To be here on True Fire Live and play more music for us. We love you. We love the love course. Love you guys too. It's fantastic. And we're looking forward to having you back, of course. Thank you, and thanks to everyone for joining us. Our yeah. pleasure, man. Thank mm -hmm. you.